consistency over intensity. That's the lesson I have learned the past few days. So my husband and I recently started going to the gym again and it's been full of lessons for me. I've also realized that I'm the kind of person who tries to go hard or go home. But then again, sometimes I max out before I even get to my goal. So I'm learning that intensity is good, but consistency is better. Hi people, good morning. How are you doing? Today is the long awaited Q&A session. Good morning. <coughs> good morning, rise and shine. We're going to the gym today. And today's the day I'm going to film my um, Q&A. So I'm going to film it at the gym. Let's go together. Okay, this is my gym outfit. I'm not wearing my shoes yet. But I have this on and we're out. Hi guys, hi my people. So we're back and today we're having a Q&A session. I asked you guys to drop your questions and I received a few questions or quite a number of questions and I'm going to be answering them pretty fast because I don't want to procrastinate this video again. This is my third time trying to film this video and I'm not even going to bother about makeup. But yeah, let's go. So the first question I have here is how are you really? Hmm, thank you for asking this. I'm fine. I think I'm fine. Am I fine? I'm fine. I'm very fine actually. I've just been a little bit busy, busier than normal, but I'm good. In fact, so fun fact, I recently started going to the gym again, as you must have seen, and that really tired me out last week and the week before, but I think I've gotten the hang of it today. It was pretty easy. It was much easier to work out, but I'm really fine. I have a lot of things to do work-wise, family-wise, but we're winging it uh the next question says why am i holding this brush okay like this brush looking you like it's coming out it's coming it's so so ask 10 random facts about yourself first of all are you even on this channel if you've not watched my get to know me tag so i'm going to say that the response to this question is on my channel i'll link it up here go and watch my get to know me and then deduce random facts about me from there please guys go watch someone asked me what's your career secret hmm, that's a pretty good question and i feel like it needs a whole video but in a nutshell i would say going above and beyond your scope of work i know people say stick to your jd stick to your kpis don't let them use you but let me tell you the only way that i've been able to grow in my career is when they have used me do you know the time in my career that i was working three jobs or three roles in one organization and guess what today those roles and the experiences i got out doing those roles have helped me so i would say extend yourself especially if you're young and if you're in your 30s your 20s or maybe more like your 20s actually extend yourself don't limit yourself to your scope of work if you feel like you have other skills explore your other skills and whilst you're extending yourself and then serving in those um, areas people will find you that would speak for you even far beyond your current employment please guys don't be too money centered just yet in your 20s extend yourself gain more knowledge get more experience make more mistakes fail and fail fast and i feel like you'll have a better career at the end of the day um next one says how did you handle bass boys in marriage bass boys in marriage bass boys in marriage oh i had to reach out to the person to say what is bass boys in marriage what do you mean and she said fights in marriage here is it simple so misunderstandings are bound to happen like i mean if people who are not born twins even if you're twins you're different you have different minds different spirits different bodies so you think differently and you do things differently so definitely there will be fiction but here's the thing fiction is good because it helps you then get to know each other and make less mistakes going forward for us when we were dating we had a lot of mushy mushy moments and we had to sit down and tell ourselves look let's not pretend 
show me who you are I'll show you who i am let's not try to be perfect and this was six months into our relationship and immediately we made that decision it was bad boost. everybody was seeing what was on their minds everybody was seeing what they did not like nobody was trying to cover up and you know what that did for us it really helped us to bond and today those mistakes that were made we don't make them anymore glory and for those other areas that we're still learning and improving it gets better because over time we've had more learning areas more learning points to focus on it just helps you get to know each other take it as a learning process and please don't fight dirty in marriage no need for abusive talk no need for um physical uh altercations no need for any form of abuse just have healthy conversations if you have misunderstandings communicate it clearly and let it be resolved the aim is to have better understanding this one is on my sister she's asking me who is my favorite sister who do you guys think is my favorite sister so i i love my sisters equally and i don't have a favorite so i'm sorry you see it's not you what are two things you regret about choices you have made you people ask like what is this question you people really want to know wow i'll just say it's not cliche right but i don't think that i have a lot of regrets and that's just the truth i'm not trying to act like i'm perfect i don't think that i do have a lot of regrets but one thing i regret is not giving my life to christ early even though that that didn't that, i don't know it depended on me but it also did not depend on me you know you know what i mean why i regret it is because i feel like if i had given my life to christ earlier like maybe say when i was in secondary school or in just early years of uni i would have been able to foster stronger christian sisterhood relationships so right now i'm at a point where i have friends um i have friends from my past life i have friends from my new life but i'm struggling to find that sisterhood if that's what it's called so Yes, we had a sisterhood conference last week. I'm going to just insert videos here. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> so they grouped us into teams and I was my team's leader. So I got to start the race first. Look at me fighting for my life. Ah, uh, guess what? We won. You guys, it paid off. Yes, yes, sir. It was so much fun and i just understood the, the beauty of having covenant relationships and this is not just about having friends that you, sh you share life with this is covenant relationships that are tied to your destiny this is someone that thinks like you i have very good friends amazing friends that will show up for me but in this phase of my life and i'm just being honest you guys i'm just being honest in this phase of my life i find that i'm needing more of destiny friendships so people who connect with me on this same level or who see god's work the way i see god's work who see family the way i see family who are purposeful purpose driven so i want to have i'm looking for and i'm believing god to have all of that in one but i feel like if i give my life to christ earlier i would have been in a space where i would have been surrounded with this kind of people much much earlier than i have now that's just it i i, I that's like my biggest regret ever but i know that god is merciful and very soon i'm going to testify of new friendships and sisterhoods oh my leg is paining me when is not yoga that i'm doing Caleb is laughing at me yes thanks and god bless is it supposed to be like this does it look awkward in my video hey, i don't know what to do with it like it's paining me your muscles my muscles ah, cool. and i was am i still in frame yes. okay guys someone asked me my favorite marriage advice I, I was going to say that one where they say don't sleep in your anger reconcile even though that's one of my faves because if you really stick to it guys it makes all the difference you literally some days there's this particular day not even one day many days where we have work the next day we have to be awake by six we are fighting or we're settling fight till 5 a.m like and you have to get to work by you have to be awake by six for work you guys it's a game changer because it just shows that you're prioritizing your marriage over everything life has to offer and when you prioritize your marriage it really does help you so i would say that that advice of not sleeping on your anger and making sure you sort out every misunderstanding before you go to bed is gold it's golden it's not cliche you guys try it with your relationships it's going to work and then it's going to push you guys to talk it's going to push you to to express yourself it's going to eliminate any form of silent treatment or malice it's going to help you is it tough it's tough some days you just be like i beg 
whatever i'm sleeping but on the long run you will have built a very good communication channel or system and then you guys just be used to spleen and resolving issues faster so yes that would definitely be my favorite marriage advice someone says how do you balance motherhood and your spiritual life especially a toddler child balance means different things to different people for me is being able to show up in different areas of my life as much as i can in that season balance can look like one day i'm working over hours and i only get back just in time for bedtime and then the other day i'm spending the whole day with them and we are bonding and dancing so i would say that one key factor is to realize that whilst i'm a mom and i'm a career person and i'm a youtuber and i'm all these good things i'm a wife i'm first and foremost a child of god and everything in my life stems from that source so i find that whenever i feel overwhelmed it's because i've maybe i've not had enough time for my quiet time i've not carried god along my day that makes me feel out of balance so whenever i feel the most balanced is when i've gotten my work with god on track so that's like my key for balancing it out and just being very open to myself to say look at this point you can't be available but who can be available putting structure in place i have a lot of structure right now we have two domestic helps in our house just because there's a lot of things to be done on this earth and you need structure your children can't be lacking your meals can't be lacking behind nothing can be lacking behind though so you need to put structure in place and keep god as your source and he's just going to help you out why did you change church interesting interesting that you asked this i really like this question i don't think i have spoken about this publicly but for backstory right my husband and i met in a church now this goes to another question that someone asked me how did you meet your husband we met in church our family church that church was where i grew up in and my husband also so it was a family church and we had been there we had served for years in the teenage department we were teenage teachers and we really loved serving god there because you could just catch teenagers young you could help them through their trying times and it was not like a preacher member relationship it was more like you were siblings because the age difference wasn't so much maybe five ten years and most of my teenagers are really like my siblings right now but it got to a point where we knew that while service is good it's important that you are growing there is something that paul says that i will continue with you for your progress and joining the faith there is such a thing as your progress and joining the faith church going to church is not about i like this church it's so pretty i like the sound are you growing spiritually or i like it my family grew up here my family this is my family child i was baptized here my grandmother was baptized here my great grandfather was baptized here so we're here i get that it's cool but do you still have the joy of the faith do you are you excited about the things of god do you feel like you're growing are you learning more or are, is your consecration increasing by the reason of the food you are eating the spiritual food now the message you're hearing so we had to make that very very tough choice in fact it was it was it took us three years to finally just make that choice because when it comes to living in family church is more than just living it's very sentimental because these are people that you have worked with you have grown with these are people that watched you get married they watch you go to school they watched you help teach their children and now you're saying you're leaving why why is there no god here but for us we were led by god and we knew that at this point if we do not leave it will be us sacrificing the greater good like what god was calling us to do just because of sentiment so Picking a church, church of choice is not sentimental in any way. Allow God lead you and be honest to know that at this point, I'm not growing. This community is not helping me in my work with God. I have probably maxed out of this space. And let God help you in finding a new church or where to go. I believe that God can lead you um, in the church to go. So that happened and yeah, we finally did it. So I initially started, I initially started going to another church then my husband came on board and then since then it's been another journey but in all i'll say the body of christ is for you a part of god's body there's no best church 
find where you can grow find where can feed you find where god is leading you you can serve and where your gifts the giftings of god in your life will be unlocked oh i forgot my mic am i preaching no but that's why i changed churches and let's see how it unfolds i'm excited i'm really excited someone is asking have you ever made any financial decision you regretted trying to live above your means this is the final question i'm gonna drop my phone for this um have i ever made any financial decision i regretted no so let me tell you how we grew up right my dad's an accountant my mom is an architect aside from being an architect my mom is the definition of a virtuous woman she would how to explain it to you my mom is not lazy she would look for ways to make money she would look for ways to empower herself she would look for ways to improve herself i grew up being prudent i remember in secondary school my dad would say look um, we're going shopping for your provision list but this is the cap your cap for provision is 2000 naira so if you like use that 2000 naira to buy one kellogg's conflicts you will go to school with one kellogg's conflicts if you like take your 2000 naira and go to the market and get the best deals and come with a big bag whatever it is is your financial decision and you are going to face the brunt you're going to bear the brunt of it that really trained us my parents even when the things started to look brighter for us financially my dad was so we already trained to be prudent i remember my sisters even being in the university and then going to look for purses to sell like we would look for how to make more money we would look for how to save our money because we knew that we had a cap and once you're out you're out you're not going back until it's midterm to ask for more money so whilst you are saving your money are you putting your money into multiple streams that could help you multiply and make more money for you are you applying yourself in other ways that can give you more money so you can speak how can speaking get you more money you can edit videos how, how can i get you more money you can do you can style people how can i get you more money so i don't think i've had any financial regrets so far except i won't call them regrets we've had a lot of like as a couple now we've had a lot of financial downtimes where we had made some investment and we lost money but i do i regret it no because we did those investments in submission to each other and as a team and so when those things went south we were able to come out of it together was it easy at the time to be honest i feel like it was easier than anybody else would have managed it and that's where you know the whole talk of money and then money being a tool and not being your god comes in because things can happen you can you can lose money you can lose an investment you can things can happen but your source is god and not money let that sink in and then if he's your source and he gives you the power to make wealth if that stream dries off guess what you can dig another well again like jacob this is the end of this q a session i really did enjoy it my legs are hurting i don't know how you guys fold your legs for this long but if this is your first time here you're welcome so i do introduce myself my name is daniela okwa and thank you for coming to my channel don't leave without subscribing and sharing this video with someone that you love hey. <laughs>